Good morning, everybody. Today is a magical Monday, and magically our opening disappeared. We don't know where it went. We don't know if it went to a football game. We don't know if it went to a basketball game. But my executive editor is here, and my executive editor, could you please tell me where our intro went? <laughs> Technology. <laughs> Technology. <laughs> we don't know where our opening went, but we are so happy to be back with you today. What a beautiful, beautiful day in North Georgia. And I brought Tim on today because Tim left me for a few months, and it's because I quit making spaghetti. He and his wife moved to Florida. Cole went to Florida. Y'all left. They love my spaghetti. I just wasn't cooking like I had been cooking. In the winter months, I get back to cooking. You're back. I'm back. You're back. We're so excited. We have a full crew now. <clears throat> we were operating literally, skeleton crew would have been a big understatement. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it was, things <laughs> change, things change. And um, now we have a full crew back. We are going to talk technology today. We're going to talk about the area is growing so much. You just worked the barbecue and blues. Is that what they call it? Blues and barbecue. Blues and barbecue yeah. up in Fannin County. It was crazy packed. Can we talk a little bit about where did these people come from, Tim? Oh, I just all over Fulton County. You know, you can you can imagine just all every over. tag, <laughs> every nook and cranny. Mm -hmm, <laughs> so. mm -hmm. And they were sitting on the lawns, on the train tracks. They were sitting everywhere. They were. Yeah, it was. How many years has this event been happening? I believe that was their thirteenth. Uh, well, 12, 13, thirteen. So. 11th. Okay, 11, well, it must be lucky for them because it was it was amazingly packed, mm -hmm. and y'all can re-air that footage now on ETC, and that's one of the things technology allows you to record it, and then you can play it again. That's right. Yeah. And we can use that footage. You have seen lately, um, we're out and about all over Gilmer County. We're out and about in Fannin County. I have a house we're going to list up in Morganton. You're going to go up there with the drone and do some shots because we have almost 12 acres that goes with this property. There's no better way ever to show real estate than with a drone. And you are now becoming, he went from executive editor <laughs> to executive drone master. <laughs> so now there's your new title. How are you liking the technologies as they change so quickly? Oh yeah, I'm just having to adapt and keep up with, I guess, just it's constantly evolving. Now mm -hmm. we've got, you know, 4K is kind of, kind of the standard. Not Explain what 4K means. So that's just the resolution, the amount of pixels. Mm -hmm. um, Better than it's ever been? It is. Um, for television, it's, it would still be 1080, but you've mm -hmm. got 4K stations and things like that, channels. Um, and now they're making 6K cameras. Can you just... <laughs> oh, my gosh. So. That's going to show every single flaw on us. <laughs> oh, no. I so, don't know if I like that. I don't even know if the human eye can see 6K. I don't, Isn't I don't, that crazy? Sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. so how often and how quickly does the technology change? Uh, just, uh, constantly, mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. um, it only takes a year for it to be just seemingly, you know, different. Mm -hmm. So, well, one of the things that ETC has been on the cutting edge is getting the fiber optic and going as far and wide as we can with that. Right. It makes a drastic difference. It does. Yeah. The speeds. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. And and you guys are doing the football games, the basketball games, you do the baseball games, <clears throat> you do special events, and you're out in the field with people. And do people often come up to you and say? I live where I don't get ETC. Why can't I get ETC? It still is impossible to cover everywhere, isn't it? That's right. Um, yeah, I know there's interest in Fairmount, mm -hmm. you know, just areas that Fairmount, are so close. they are begging. But, they are yeah. begging because I'll tell you what they have. I'm not going to say the name of it because I'd probably get in trouble. <laughs> but I have a kid who lived over there, and the worst Wi-Fi in the world was at Fairmount. Yeah. Horrible, horrible, Absolutely. horrible. Yeah. So people are desperate for that new technology, especially with people working at home. That's right, yeah. Because a lot of people with COVID, their offices, you know, office buildings shut down and they, they sold the property and just said, keep your laptop, be at home. We'll have meetings about four times a year. And other than that, people are working at home. Now there's, you know, with all that flexibility, now you can go live in paradise, but, mm -hmm. but you still need the internet. So you have to find a compromise. Right, That's, right. Uh, 
Now, your wife, when y'all came back from Florida, brought her job with her, didn't she? She did, yeah. That is the coolest <laughs> thing ever. I mean, it's like she gets this job in Florida, which really has California connections, yep. and she's doing it in Georgia. That's now, how cool. cool is that and how awesome is that? <laughs> That's pretty awesome. That is pretty awesome. That is pretty awesome. And it means that y'all got to be back home. Don't doesn't she have a new baby, grand, uh, new niece or nephew she, coming along? She does, yeah, nephew. Uh, yeah. Lincoln's uh, about as old as Zanna. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Three or four weeks now, so. Uh huh. So it made coming home even sweeter. It did, yeah. Yeah, it, yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. Well, I showed Tim a picture of me when I was about three, and my hair was as curly as his is. <laughs> And we laughed about it, and I said, I could have been your mama, because, except he wouldn't be skinny, because he'd be eating more. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it is so funny, coming back home was, it was special for y'all, because you tried the thing, you went to Florida, yada, yada, and you have to keep coming back to see mom and dad, you have to come back to see the baby, you just have to come back. And with your sweet wife bringing her job with her, that was pretty cool. It was. And yeah. you got to come back to the job that we were begging him to come back to. <laughs> begging. I was calling, crying, saying, I'm going to quit. I'm going to retire. I can't do this without you. You've got to come home. He came home. <laughs> <laughs> he came home, and I'm so excited. Gilmer County was home for you. It, it is, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, of course, I'm, I guess I'm a little, I've been... A, a little accustomed, a little urbanized, I guess, since then. So Cartersville is like my new home, but, mm -hmm. but you know, there's still something about Gilmer and mm -hmm. LJ that's just truly, yeah. Home. Yes. Home. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, and it's, um, I can't remember the line in Dwight's song, but, <clears throat> but he talks about a, a piece of your heart is here, and that's what LJ does. It kind of mm -hmm. captures the moment, captures you when you come to visit. People say, I really like the atmosphere here. And that's really cool. And that's something you've been able to capture on video and on photography. And now with the drone, you're going to be able to capture some really cool stuff. Yes. Yeah. And in the next few days, y'all are going to see some amazing stuff. Our new commercial you just did shows some footage of the most beautiful creek in Gilmer County. And today we're going out with the drone to capture that footage. And it is going to be really, really something that y'all are going to get to see. And there's just something about the back roads. And we talk about this all the time. If you've only seen the roundabout in LJ, you haven't really seen LJ. So we're going to take you on the back roads. We're going to take you to the places that are often forgotten. And so many people will show something, and then I'll get a message or a call from somebody. And they'll say, oh, my grandmother used to live three houses down from that, and I hadn't been on that road in years. Get out and take the back roads, and the fall is the best time ever to do that. It is. So turkeys and bear and, um, God, I started saying moose. We don't have any moose around here. <laughs> but deer, we have so many deer around. And it, in Kusawati, I know I have a couple of houses up in Kusawati listed right now, and the sadly the deer population is too many, and they're too thin. Mm -hmm. They need to eat. I need to make them some spaghetti. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need to make them spaghetti. So, now today we're going to share. I was lucky enough. Yesterday was National Daughters Day. And I got to spend the evening with my daughter, my granddaughter, and my great-granddaughter. So, we had four generations at a gospel concert last night. And I couldn't have picked a better concert than to go to Canton. And we got to see... Glory Bound, and an extra special Dixie Echoes. But the footage of Dixie Echoes is on Ansley's camera, not on mine. So you're going to get to see Glory Bound, some of my favorite and dear, dear friends. We're going to share a little bit of that music because y'all know I'm a Southern girl who loves Southern gospel music. Then we're going to come back and we're going to talk about Heart of the Home because we're doing, <clears throat> first of all, we're doing a program to honor my director who lost his life last year. And um, very, very sad. Fred Wyndham was the go-to person. He was my everything when it came to television. He and I did magical television for many years together. And I miss him so much. Tim is a whole lot younger than Fred. He's a whole lot like Fred, though, because he really cares about the product and what we're producing. And so we're playing around. We're doing Heart of the Home. And we're going to share a little bit of the back, the back scenes of that when we come back with y'all. 
And you did a new opening for Heart of the Home with blippets of other things we've done in the past. And I think that was really cool. I think it was time for that change. Yeah. And I'm glad you had that. You had that thought of let's go back and let's move ahead at the same time. Yeah, so that absolutely. was really, really cool. Okay, we're going to go now to some music by Glory Band. And this was last night. Um, I want to remind y'all, there is a Glory Band concert. There are two things happening in the next few days. Bike and Classic Car Ride for Charity. It benefits the White Christmas that Glory Band is, is the grandfather to. They're the ones who started this. This is Saturday, October the 8th. And this is for your antique cars, your motorcycles. You get a meal included and you get a Glory Band concert included. $20 per car or bike. And the lunch and the concert is free with your registration. This is on, at 5301 Hickory Flat Highway in Canton. And it is... Y'all, this is, this is such a, over 700 children last year benefited from Glory Bound doing these concerts and raising this money to provide Christmas for Cherokee County families who couldn't buy Christmas for their children. The next concert, and we are going to have, we're going to be there, the Isaacs, John Bowman, and Glory Bound, November the 13th. Please mark your calendar. This starts at 4 p.m., which is perfect because that's when they change the darn time and it gets dark early. Don't you hate that? I'm not a dark person. I don't like old dark 30. I can't stand it. But anyway, there are going to be a lot of groups performing then. Linda Autry, who is one of the greatest piano players in not, in, not only in Georgia, in the world, she will be there. And this is Canton First Baptist Church, 1 Mission Point, Canton, Georgia. And again, it's November the 13th. 4 p.m., the Isaacs, number one in gospel bluegrass in the world. They are the top of the line. They are the best, and they. this is the 36th annual. We want you to make plans to be there. All four generations of us will be there. I can guarantee you that. Now, we're going to take you to a video that we I did on my phone, so you know the quality is not going to be perfection, but you're going to get to hear Glory Bound and these wonderful, wonderful men. Their music is a ministry. It is not about a show. It is not about raising anything other than awareness of you and your relationship with Jesus. So here we go.
for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella Day, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meet, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ. How may I serve you? United Country Talking Rock Realty says welcome to North Georgia. The leaves are falling and the mountains are calling. Take the back roads and really get to know North Georgia. Combine the amazing workmanship of SGC groups, transforming the forgotten to the fabulous. Teamwork makes the dream work. For buying, selling, or flipping, call Sherry Martin at 404-375-0590 or Evelyn Calhoun at 770-733-0779. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece, or just making memories, writing a great American novel, or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow, whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000 or go online to georgiamtc.com. High-speed Wi-Fi. Not quite as important as running water in your home, but close. Ignite Internet from ETC powers your Wi-Fi network with consistent speeds to keep all your gadgets going strong. Streaming video players, laptops, tablets, even smartphones, so you're never stuck with those big cell data charges. And talk about value. Just pick your speed and keep the Wi-Fi flowing in your home at a great low price. Upgrade your Internet today. Call or visit etcnow.com to learn more. Okay, we're back. Guess what we're going to talk about now? Food. Oh. Food. <laughs> we like to talk about food. And you see this, this cake right here? This is what brought the program to be today. A precious, precious lady whose name was Loretta Brackett made these chocolate cakes. Number one, she made me over 300 cookies to take to the USO. Jen went down into the USO. And I said, Miss Loretta, is there any way you can make me some cookies? 300. This is her cake recipe. This is in my number three cookbook. This is the best cake in the world, and this is from Carrie Hill House. I, it, that was sitting there waiting on me last night, and I didn't eat it yet. I made coffee, and I was going to eat it, and I thought, no, I want to show it on the show today. We're going to show some photos of how Heart of the Home evolved, and it evolved from the first programs were done at the farm, at Harris Farm. And the lighting was horrible, the equipment was horrible. Everything about it, when we go back, you've edited some of that and you have looked at it for me. So, and, and we just were like, are you kidding me? Did, we didn't know what we were doing evidently because we really didn't know about lighting and adjusting. But you said these cameras do auto adjust. They, yeah, so can, they're yeah. better than what we used to use? I wouldn't call it better, but sometimes it's quite convenient for okay. sure. Okay, can we get the pictures up? Okay, so we're going to... Okay, this is the beginning of the Sherry Show that actually started in my home. And we're kind of doing the pictures. That's, that's the end of... We were doing Heart of the Home, and then we started the Sherry Show in my home, and it was perfect. It just, the setting was perfect, it was great, it just, it worked well, and that was uh, Chris Childers, who has uh, been doing some other stuff on television now. But just a fun, fun time. You gotta make it fun, you gotta make it, you gotta make it comfortable for people. And you know, yeah. everybody, when I chose this table, I would say, I want people to sit down at my set and say, oh, it's just like being in your kitchen. It's just like gathering around a table. 
I don't want people to feel intimidated by being on television. I don't want them to feel intimidated that they don't know what we're going to talk about. I want to talk about stuff that everybody knows. You know about cooking. You know about the mountains. You know about the old music. You know about your old friendships. And that's what we want you to feel comfortable with. And that's kind of what Heart of the Home was designed about. Was um, And this is at Mayfield Dairies. Now look at that camera, how heavy and how big that <laughs> camera was. We don't have cameras like that anymore. We have these very small, what do you call those things? Camcorders? Camcorders, yeah. Yeah, we have a camcorder that's high definition. Those things were certainly not high definition. Thank goodness <laughs> I looked younger then, y'all. So... But I got the sweetest compliment last night at the singing. <laughs> Thank you for the lady who said, you're not 60 yet, are you? And I about passed out. I said, no, ma'am, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> I just laughed. Okay, there is my wonderful director, Fred Wyndham, and my beautiful daughter, Angela. We did Heart of the Home. It started at the farm with Lori Tipton, and then it grew to go from the farm with Fred to my new home in Hill City, and then we traveled the world, and he and I traveled the world. Tim, I don't think you and I are gonna travel the world. I don't <laughs> like going to the airport anymore. We used to take cruise and go all the way to Alaska. I don't see me ever doing that again because I don't like the airport. Now, this is one of our first Heart of the Homes, and it was done in a classroom where we taught kids to make ice cream with Mayfield milk. And Scotty used to give me tons and tons of coupons that I would give out to the parents, and they loved that. But that's where Heart of the Home was born, truly, as a four-minute segment here at ETC. And we just grew and grew and grew, and how much fun we have had. That's what it's all about. I want to keep it fun. There's Scotty Mayfield and the Chef and the Fat Man, and those children now, one of them is excelling in college. They're all grown up. I mean, there's Johnson, and there, oh, it's just so precious. There's Brandon, there's Brooke, there's Emily. It is just, it is so wild to think that these children are now out of college, and couple, I think one of them has a child of her own, so it's just wild. The time has flown by so fast, and this is a young man who founded Carding Crusaders. I absolutely loved having him on the show, and Brett Miller was so much fun, and I just loved him, loved him, loved him, and what he, what we're making there now had peaches and cream cheese, and you serve it with Mayfield ice cream. So anything with peaches and cream cheese and Mayfield, and it's served hot, cannot be bad. <laughs> no, cannot be bad, and it was very simple. Now, this is in Alaska. This is one of the programs that we won a silver telly for. And we were making a wonderful, wonderful dip out of fresh-caught salmon, Jerry Ballou, had gone out and caught the salmon and then brought it in and it was reeked of garlic. Do you like garlic? <laughs> yeah, it was garlic and onions and it was yummy. And we had 35 people there that day for that shoot and that stuff was gone. It was scarfed up in five minutes. So it was amazing. There you go, there's the salmon. And you use cream cheese and onions and garlic and um, a little bit of blue plate mayonnaise. And we took the blue plate from Georgia with us to Alaska. Because yeah. <laughs> I can tell you, they do not sell blue plate in Alaska. So, And there's in my home, at uh, the heart of the home when we moved there, there's Judge Harry Doss and my dear, dear friend Regina Camp that I love to death. And... Uh, that was a, I think it was when Judge Harry, something was going to, oh, that's when we flew in the food from Gabriel's in Orlando. We flew in Gabriel's subs and Gabriel's wow. wings, and then we tested them doing different sauces with Gabriel's wings. And we also had Gabriel's subs, which was like the greatest treat in the world. Used to, if I'd have a huge closing, <laughs> I'd call Gabriel's and order food. And there again is our sweet director, Fred Wyndham, who has gone to be with the Lord. And, and I can't say enough, I can't praise him enough, I can't brag on him enough. He was um, a godly man who did for so many people. And sadly, at a very young age, um, he was called home to be with the Lord, and it, it, it devastated me. It broke my heart. There, once again, is Scotty Mayfield and the crazy Chef and the Fat Man. We had so much fun there. And just doing some really, really cool stuff. Now you got some cake, you got some cake pictures. Yeah, we need to we need to show that because I want to show this is this cake was delivered to us warm. Now this is a piece of that very recipe. This is um, that's Mama Loretta made that cake and it was literally delivered to the set warm. 
and it was on the front of our calendar. It was the best cake in the world. It is very simple, but the icing is very testy. Now, does Miss Brie cook a yeah. little bit? Yeah. Okay, this icing, you have to really test it. And I have done it to perfection, and I have done it where it was a little bit grainy. You know, I didn't get the sugar cooked down enough. But it's a great cake recipe, and I think it's in my number three cookbook. But it was just so, it was so wonderful, and uh, that was her way of showing love, was to make you one of those amazing, amazing cakes. So that part of the home was actually shot at Charlene's home, and uh, we just, we had so much fun. Laughter, sitting around the kitchen table. You found a program that is going to be airing in the near future, and it is Charlene and I and a couple other women sitting around the table at Charlene's house. That's it. <laughs> what were we talking about? I'm not really sure. I haven't popped it in yet. <laughs> well, we just, I think it was women talking about things that happen with women. And when we did the opening for Heart of the Home, it said a place um, where people gather to begin their day, end their day with good food, good conversation, and time spent together. And that's what a kitchen is supposed to be. And this is a gift that Bree and Tim got me. And you see what it says? The kitchen is the heart of the home. And the kitchen truly is the heart of the home. And yesterday I was sitting in a kitchen here in Gilmer County and the table, and we've shown y'all the table and you got to shoot the table. Yeah. Um, number one, Dwight Sanford had never, he didn't know what halibut was. He now knows that it is holy halibut. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tim was editing the show and through the whole process, and you got to think about this, this is Dwight's first cooking show ever to do, and he's sitting there, and he can't stop eating the halibut. And so he apologizes for talking with his mouth full because he's loving the halibut. Oh. <laughs> the halibut was flown in from Alaska. Tori actually caught the halibut, and that's what the next part of the home is going to be about, and y'all are going to get to see it. You're about, what, halfway through editing? About halfway. And have you seen some surprises and some things we'll need to change? Yeah, yep. absolutely. Yeah. Because it is an experiment. It is. It's a learning curve for both of us. I'd never done this without Fred. Fred was my number one, and he was my go-to for everything. And he would tell me, he'd say, I need a 30-second commercial. I'd do it just like this. And he said, how do you have 30 seconds in your head? I said, I don't know. I said, I must think in 30-second increments. I don't know. <laughs> And then he would say, well, do another one, and it would be 29.6. He said, you're dead on every time. How do you do that? I don't know. I've, I'd never done television until ETC brought me here. And I started with Rhonda Thomas, and then um, who else? Um, Rhonda Thomas. Oh, and then um, Lynn Weaver did two shows at my home. So she did one at the farm and one at the new house. And I just loved it. And then when Roger Fudge made the call and said, would you be interested in hosting a daily talk show? And I said, talking? I said, I've been cooking. So I was used to cooking and used to doing segments about cooking, but then it came down to we're just going to talk. Well, we've done some cooking segments here. Mm -hmm. And we've done some many cooking segments here. You know, Jen would bring in uh, appliances and I'd bring in stuff and I'd come in. It's a job to lug all that stuff up here for a four-minute event. And that's what we were doing. And I would run back here to the kitchen. That's right. And for anybody who's ever been in this building, the kitchen is way yonder way. <laughs> and I'd be like, hold on a minute, hold on a minute. Let me run out here and, and let me check it. Let me test it. Let me see what's going on. But we brought cooking into the studio very easily with certain recipes. But I can remember one time I had done something here on the set maybe salmon, and Danny Hensley walked in that afternoon and he said, smells like somebody's been cooking and we had been cooking. If it weren't for Danny Hensley bringing me back here, we wouldn't be sitting here today. That's right. Yeah. So I will forever be grateful to him. I will be forever grateful that, you know, Ed Singleton picked up the phone and called me and said, um, you know, it's Joe Kelly McCutcheon's last program. I want you to be there. We all developed great friendships as we all did our programs here at ETC. That's what life is about. It's about looking back and looking ahead at the same time. We're looking back at the old technology and we're laughing because we got some shots that are like, are you kidding me? And then we're getting some really cool stuff with the drone. Now, do you want to address how the drone is bringing you to a new era? It's, well, it's nothing I've ever operated before, but it's it's really exciting because you can, 
you can get perspectives that you know you just normally wouldn't you know being on the ground mm -hmm. so uh, a lot of opportunity for creativity definitely mm -hmm. and when you create the product and you're finished you think you're finished <laughs> you tweak it and you tweak it uh. and you tweak it <laughs> and you tweak it and he just keeps messing with it. So you worked on our commercial, yeah. and you did a new commercial for us that y'all are gonna love. You're gonna wanna know where this land is. It's not for sale yet, but it is absolutely one of the most beautiful pieces of Gilmer County. And we only caught it with my iPhone. Today, you get to capture it with a drone. That's gonna be like magical, y'all. It's gonna be absolutely magical. Now, one of the things we learned about me and cooking is I did my first cookbook to raise money for Habitat for Humanity. I was on the board of directors and they said, we need a fundraiser, and I said, I've got the perfect fundraiser. And so I did a cookbook and it sold out immediately. And then I did a second cookbook. This would be the second cookbook and uh, it has the Heart of the Home logo on it. This logo was designed by Mary Livesey and I'm forever thankful to her for doing that because it's very, very simple and it's just perfect. So, so it is really, really neat. And uh, it's very simple. It just says the, the heart of the home. The kitchen truly is the heart of the home. And the other logo that I always say is simple, southern, and scrumptious. It has to be simple. It has to be southern. It has to be scrumptious. Well, my mama's spaghetti is not simple. It's not southern, but it is scrumptious. <laughs> <laughs> so it gets one out of three of those. And that's what the recipes are about. It's about the old memories and what made me really want to do today's program. I'm working on an estate sale that is going on and we're cleaning out drawers the other day and we're throwing stuff away and throwing stuff away. And I look down and I see some papers with handwritten recipes. Well, they're out there in my car now, y'all. I refused to throw them away. Even though the family had gotten everything they wanted, I just, it's in this lady's handwriting. And I said, I can't throw this away. So they're in my mm. car. And I'm gonna make copies of them to give back to the children and then I'm gonna use them in my next cookbook. Because those sweet handwritten recipes, I'm gonna give you directions on how I make chicken piccata soup in just a little bit. Because in the winter, my mama used to call this Jewish penicillin because it keeps you healthy and wealthy and wise all year long. It's just really, really good soup. But I created it doing chicken piccata. Mama just did it as chicken. And I added the piccata mix to it. So we're gonna share that with you. But when people would say, well, what's the recipe? I had to go back and recreate it. And I still didn't measure. See these? I just don't know how to use them. I mean, I understand that there's some usefulness to them, right. <laughs> but I don't know why. <laughs> I just don't do that. So most really good cooks are creative because they don't measure. So we're going to show this is chicken piccata soup. And this is, okay, you start with a whole big chicken. And you boil it, and you boil it, and you boil it. And I dice up a whole onion, and I put the onion in there with it and then I really throw the black pepper to it, and then I throw butter to it. I put a, a whole stick of butter in there, and then, and then it cooks and cooks and cooks and cooks and cooks. You see the onion, and you boil it down, you boil it down, you boil it down. And you just keep cooking and cooking, and you see I got a pepper box in my hand. I don't have a shaker, I got a box, because I put a lot <laughs> of pepper in it. And, and then you just cook, 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 and don't ask me how long, because I just cook it till it's done. And then, and then you just cook, cook, cook. And then if it doesn't make enough broth, I throw a little bit of that bulk bouillon in it, but I don't usually have to do that. You see the consistency there? I have thickened it with flour and water. Don't ask me how much, because I don't measure. I use a wire whisk and you use cold water with your flour to keep it from lumping and you stir it and then you add it to the chicken broth after you've taken the chicken out of it. You let the chicken cool, and then you dice up little bitty pieces to put back into the soup. But the trick is you keep all the rest of the chicken then to make my chicken salad. So you only use little pieces for the soup. And so the soup, the soup gets very little chicken. It's the broth and the onion, and it just, it's just a good warm feeling. And, and this is how you serve it. You add lemon to it at the end when you're about to serve it. You 
put it in your cup and you squeeze a little bit of lemon in it and then you put capers in it. And it is light, refreshing, delicious. And I have to say, I have, I have a good buddy who works with us and um, Justin absolutely loves my chicken piccata soup. When Once the temperature is cool, I start making chicken piccata soup and I start sharing it with neighbors, sharing it with friends. And you have to like lemon, you have to like capers, or you will not like this soup. But I guarantee you, if you like those things, it is the most refreshing soup in the world. And it's just, uh, it just opens your head up and it just feels good and it, it's good for you. So, so now, I'm sure y'all wrote all that down. Did you hear me give you any measurements? Not a single one. Not a single one. I don't measure. When I'm cooking, my grandma didn't measure. My Aunt Tempe didn't measure. My Aunt Leela didn't measure. So when they taught me to cook, I'd say, well, how much? Well, just a little bit, just a T90 bit, just a pinch. And I'm going, how do you write cookbooks when you don't measure? So when I do a recipe for the cookbook, and a lot of y'all sent me your recipes, and they're in these cookbooks, I did test your recipes. And one of the first things I tested that I fell absolutely in love with was cornbread cake. And it was sent to me from a lady here in Gilmer County. And when I made it, I said, you have got to be kidding me. Well, I've only made it about four times, and let me tell you why. When you make it, you will eat it. And I mean, it's addictive. It's crunchy, and that's where it gets the name cornbread cake. It has no cornmeal in it. It doesn't resemble cornbread, except that it has that crunch. Oh my gosh, it is addictive. So again, I've only made it four times. I don't make it often because it is one of those, if you have a little bit left in your house, you're going to make coffee and you're going to eat it. So, and we don't want to do that. <laughs> you know, we don't want to do that because then, then it'd be a problem. But when we look at the technology, when we look at what you're going to be able to do in the kitchen with me, with a drone, to get shots of food, to get shots of fires. Pretty excited. It is going to be exciting. <laughs> yeah. Now, you had never done this before, but you did your research. And I yep. think research on buying new products is very important. Uh, very important, just to be able to see the specs, be able to see uh, just how other, I guess, uh, consumers uh, see the product and things mm -hmm. like that. So. Um, and you get to test it for 90 days, and if you don't like it, you get to send it back. Yeah, well, that, at least that's Amazon's policy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. That'll, that's pretty neat to, yeah, yeah, for that opportunity. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, you don't know how it's going to work. We've got a camera sitting around here somewhere that we never could get to work. So, oh, I don't know what happened to it. But anyway, now we're going to go to another video by Glory Bound because we did get to spend some time with them last night, and I'm so thankful. They um, are in Canton, Georgia. They're all based out of that area. But we I hadn't been to a concert in a long time. I think when COVID hit, we kind of distanced ourselves. And last night, we took our own bench over there by ourselves because we had baby Zanna with us. And so we wanted to be cautious about exposing her to anything. So we kind of took our own seat over there, and we had a great, great time. And I want to share a little bit of their music. So let's go back to Glory Bound. <laughs>
Tim, you ever heard the line, we ain't meeting if we ain't eating? <laughs> sure have. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Tom Wilkie might be responsible for that. Juanita Wilkie might be responsible for that. Charlene Higgins Wilkie, uh, Youngblood, might be responsible for that. We ain't meeting if we ain't eating. And we're going to show you some pictures now of eating and food and fun. And that's what the kitchen is about. You know, you cook those things that you know your family likes. You cook those things that you know your loved ones like. You cook those things that you want to test drive a recipe and see if it's going to be good and um, I will tell you my bestie made a cake the other day and it was called Kentucky Butter Cake and uh, it was fantastic and I said it kind of tastes like my pound cake but it was lighter and it wasn't a pound cake recipe it was just a cake cake recipe but it was using flour and she changed the kind of flour she used and it made it really light and really really good so so we're going to share some photos now of food, 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 food. Okay, this is the way I love to set the table. I love to set the table so people think that you really are excited that they're there. I don't like to just throw the dishes out. In the next part of the home, we're going to be in the woods using china, which is going to be really, really cool. <laughs> and then we're going to have a grand finale when when Miss Evelyn does the dishes for us, and I'm just going to tell you, it's going to be funny as heck because it's going to be, that's what it's about. Keep the laughter, keep it fun. Now there's Mama's spaghetti. Mm. Do you like my spaghetti? I love your spaghetti. <laughs> I knew you loved my spaghetti. <laughs> that's why I came back from Florida, y'all. It's the spaghetti. So, so it is all about preparing the simple southern scrumptious foods that your family loves, that your family appreciates. And somebody asked me one day, why do you use thin spaghetti? And I said, well, I don't know. Go ask my mama. She's in heaven. 68 years ago, I was taught to use thin spaghetti. That's what you do. You use thin spaghetti. When I was a little bitty girl and mama made spaghetti, she said, always thin spaghetti. Now, that's a kitchen makeover, and I love that um, little island. That was an old baker's table. So you can take something that you have. When you look around that kitchen, I have keepsakes from elderly uh, aunts. I have keepsakes from grandparents. That's what it's about. Take the things that you love and put them in your kitchen because the kitchen really is the heart of the home. And that's what life is supposed to be about, preparing those great meals for folks that you love. And um, that was, I think, on Easter weekend maybe, and when I look at that photo, I see the Lord's Supper that was Nana Baker's. Nana Baker is responsible for so many of the recipes I still do today, but she didn't measure either. So, you know, I'm guilty of writing a cookbook without many great measurements because most of the women who taught me to cook didn't measure either. So it's hard to measure when you weren't taught to measure. And that, I use quilts as my tablecloth many, many times. But you can go to Ace Hardware right here in LJ and you can buy that clear plastic that goes over your quilt. And they didn't even know they had it. I went in there one day and I said, I need to get me about six feet or eight feet of that clear plastic. And they said, what clear plastic? I said, you've got it right back here on the rollers. And the guy that waited on me didn't know it. And it was so funny. I went back there and he said, well, I've learned something today. And I said, let me tell you. I said, you can use your beautiful handmade quilts as a tablecloth when you cover it with that clear plastic. So that's just really, really cool. And um, I didn't realize that one was on there. That, uh, what a precious, precious memory. What a precious, precious memory. And that was as the sun, the porch was beginning to be the sunroom. So, um, and there's no telling what we'll see on there since we loaded this quickly. But um, again, there's my quilt again. And using, this is the china that we're going to use on the heart of the home this week. And that is very, very old, beautiful, beautiful china. And um, I love that china. I probably, maybe, I will switch it out and go to the fall colors since we are going to be outside and it is going to be a fall day. So I may change that. But that's my favorite set. Now, this is a winter recipe. This is chicken gumbo or shrimp gumbo. You can do it either way you want. You can put chicken and shrimp in it. That's what Mama Lucy taught me to do. But that's what we do is we take those recipes that those precious ladies taught us, and we do them forever and ever for our own families. And uh, that's what is so cool. You know, you take that simple recipe, and I remember when Mama Lucy told me that I realized the other day I found her old recipe and I had not been putting parsley in it. So the last years, like maybe the last five years, I don't put parsley in it. Mama Lucy used to put parsley. Well, I never have parsley, so I didn't put parsley in it. 
So I kind of adjusted a recipe is only a beginning. Now that's that's my favorite time of year. I love to set the table for Christmas. I love to cook for Christmas. Um, I love to make dressing and turkey and sweet potatoes and all that kind of stuff. But our Christmas traditional meal has always been baby pizzas and the bacon wrapped chicken that Doreen Lee taught me to do forever. And we always did it on Christmas Eve because that's when the kids would always come. And, and that's, you know, you can take that traditional recipe and pass it down year after year after year. I've taught everybody to make those baby pizzas. I've taught everybody to make that roll up chicken. And um, it was something Doreen Lee taught me about 40 years ago. So you think about how many times she shared it and then how many times I shared it and you continue to share those recipes. That's what life is about, sharing those good moments with family and friends and um, just a sweet, sweet memory. Now, this is my favorite thing to do. If you're having a luncheon for people that you don't know, I got involved with that for Miss Vicki's birthday. The Bible lady's birthday was coming up and I was helping with it. And I said, okay, who all is gonna be here? And she started telling me and I said, well, I've never met her and I've never met her and I know her and I did this. So I did, the cards, the place setting cards, and I described the person. And when they got there, I said, you need to sit down at the appropriate place. You read the card and decide where you should sit. The only one that got it wrong was the German lady. And this was her place setting. It says, what, no apple strudel? Oh, let me go bake some. And she didn't realize that was her because she's the apple strudel girl. And she sat down at the one that was actually my seat. And I said, no, 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 you're not me. <laughs> you are over there. And we laughed about it, but I described everybody with a little something. Paul and Gina Nelson was there. And I said, um, from an NYPD um, cop and his princess or something like that. I, and, and I could always remember 9-11. So they knew where their seat was. But you just come up with something cute and a catchy little something and put it at their place setting. And then let every, it's fun to read the cards and everybody says, is that me? Does that sound like me? And the one lady I remember I'd never met had red hair. And I told Vicki, I said, describe her to me. And she said, well, she is um, um, a businesswoman, da, da, da. And she starts telling me. And I said, well, tell me what she looks like. I don't know how to write something about somebody I don't know. And she said, well, she has red hair. So I put fire on the mountain. And she was like, what? And I said, you got red hair. <laughs> so it was fun. But that's, you know, make these events, make the people know that you went into a little trouble. You prepared very special things, but you can still keep it simple, southern, and scrumptious. You don't have to go to a lot of trouble. So, and that is one of my favorite photos um, of a very, very precious time. And that, again, was on Vicki's birthday. So... It's coming up again soon, and this is the year that she gets the tax break, so she's really happy about this birthday. <laughs> okay, and that, those are healthy, Tim. That is eggs and peppers and onions and tomatoes. Ooh. Would you eat oh, that? Yeah. Yeah, and it's healthy, and it's good for you. And cheese, no, those are just little tiny. I need to make those here one day. They're so simple, and you can freeze them in Ziploc bags and then take them on the road with you and have a little snack. They're wonderful, 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 wonderful. And that's gravy. Now, I'll tell you, I have a friend who doesn't eat gravy. Miss Evelyn doesn't like gravy. I said, how could anybody in the world not like biscuits and gravy? Miss Evelyn loves biscuits, but she doesn't like gravy. And I said, you've got to be kidding me. So there's something about Southern women. We can't set the table for breakfast without gravy. So that's kind of a staple here. It's kind of, you know. And then that is a Monte Cristo sandwich that I think Hans Rufert taught me to do that. And then you drizzle it in syrup before you serve it warm. It's so good. So good. But there are so many simple southern and scrumptious recipes. And as the holidays approach, you want to cook, you want to bring in your friends. Instead of buying them a gift, why not plan a luncheon for them? Why not invite them to lunch at your home? Instead of going out and buying a gift, we don't need anything, do we? We buy people stuff that you don't need. And then you walk in their house and it's sitting there covered in dust and you're like, they never used that. Well, they didn't use it because they didn't need it. But we need fellowship and we need friendship. And so I think the greatest gift you can give is to just have a luncheon and maybe invite five friends one time and then five friends another time and mix the groups up a little bit. And just do that. And uh, there's my sweet Ansley and Don and David and Tori and Siggy. And uh, that's what the holidays are about. 
sadly, the holidays for us are not the same because Tori's in Alaska and Siggy will be traveling there and things change. But life is good and uh, we have to celebrate every single moment. All right, now we're gonna end today with something that I love. Mr. Dwight Sanford's song, Southern Lights. Now, when we played it a few minutes ago, you were doing, <laughs> and you said, Welcome to LJ gets in your head. Yeah, I got stuck in my head all weekend. <laughs> because you've been doing something with it on a program. That's right, yeah. And that's what it's about. You like those tunes that get in your head mm -hmm. because it works for you. And it makes you feel happy. How do you like them apples? <laughs> <laughs> they love it. And today the guys are wearing, you know, uh, Aaron's got on his T-shirt. We look at these catchy tunes about the town where we're sitting and realize that everybody in the world needs to have something that just makes them feel good. And those songs are feel-good songs. So we're going to end today with Southern Lights. When he was telling the story about writing it, and I'm like, how does this stuff come in your head? Number one, if it came in my head before it comes out my mouth, I forget it. But he must walk around with a pad and pencil uh, <laughs> and write this yeah. stuff down. Yeah. And I think, wasn't it 1992 he wrote, Welcome to LJ? Wow. 1992. 30 years ago. Yeah. Oh. It's been around that long, but was just published, I think he said 2015, somewhere around there. Yeah. So it hasn't been out that long, although it has been around. I don't know when he wrote Southern, Southern Lights, but Southern City Lights. But I love it. And it's the one, if I'm going down old Highway 5 and I'm remembering when I used to drive my 66 Chevelle when there was no traffic, not a whole lot of police officers, <laughs> and I could speed a little bit. I wouldn't do that now today because there's a whole lot, of, whole lot of traffic. But you just feel good when the music sounds good, has yeah. that catchy little da-da-da. And so today we're going to leave you one of those. I said I couldn't do another show without his music because I'd get those emails again. Because people are like, well, I didn't hear any of that Ella J music today. I said, no, I skipped today. Well, what'd you do that for? <laughs> I said, okay, I won't do it again. So we're going to share a little bit of song as we go off the air. <clears throat> you and I have an appointment today with a camera. That's right. <laughs> we have an appointment with a waterfall. We have an appointment with a beautiful creek. I'm pretty excited. <laughs> it is going to be too cool, and y'all are going to get to see that footage. Now, I will tell you, the executive editor will edit it to a point that he will be happy with it. <laughs> you get to start seeing our new commercial today because it's going to air, and it does have some of the creek footage. And it, does it have that trout in it? I couldn't remember. No, actually, it no, does. No, it right? doesn't have the shot. No. There was a 19 and a half inch trout caught at where we're going today. So maybe the next commercial will show that trout right, because yeah, for be you good. fishermen, there are some big trout out <laughs> in these creeks. So here we go. We're going to leave you now, and we're going to take you to a song that you'll just, will they be sitting there doing this? <laughs> Probably. Yeah, and yeah. smiling. I think you're going to smile. I'll be back again tomorrow. Tim will be, as always, in the editing bay. You will be working. Are you working on a ball game now that you have to finish from last week? Yeah, from last week. That's mm -hmm, right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And a tribute to Danny Hensley. That's it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And we can't say enough about how we wouldn't be where we are today if it had not been for Danny Hensley. So, again, please remember Precious Dawn in your prayers. Please remember his children, his grandchildren. Um, he is gone from us way too soon. And uh, sadly, that is what happens. I also want to ask you to please pray for my sister. Her cancer has traveled to her lungs and her liver, and things are not what we had hoped for. Her birthday is October the 2nd, coming up the end of this week and or the beginning of next week, and I would like for you to please add her to all your church prayer lists. So remember that. Here we go to Southern City Lights. Dunn will be there in his ragtop 59.
smile